It is, of course, day two of the ANC's National Executive Committee virtual meeting. Yesterday, we saw the party's suspended Secretary General Ace Marashule and the MP Bongani Pohon kicked out of that meeting. Meanwhile, recorded voice notes from the meeting have been leaked online. The meeting is set to conclude tomorrow, at least that's what is expected, and all eyes are on those outcomes. Let's continue to discuss this with political analyst Professor Sipo Siepe, as well as the host of Power to Truth, uh, Dr. J.J. Dabani, who will be joining us on Skype, of course. Welcome back, uh, Professor, and thank you so much for continuing to join us and analyzing the story. So, of course, we spoke about what it is the former President Tabumbeke spoke about earlier, but now here's a question that I want to put to you on top of whether or not the ANC is imploding. As we heard, the ANC Eteguini calling for all NEC members to be removed or to remove themselves at least. Is that feasible? Is that, is that something that's actually realistic? Well, uh, it's uh, not realistic, but uh, it uh, sends a message. And the message is very clear that the NEC of the ANC is acting on behalf of the branches. It is a, remember, the conference is the one that decides uh, to say we meet as branches and we're going to elect certain people who will represent the organization in the next coming five years. And then there is a clear mandate, and that mandate is expressed in resolutions. And uh, what uh, the members have actually said, uh, if you listen to Lehote in terms of the clip about the discussion in the NEC, was that they, in the last five years or four years, the preoccupation of the ANC has been uh, internally focused and focused not so much about uh, how they should take the country forward, but more about trying to remove each other, destroy each other. So it has been more what you call internecine battles within the organization. And uh, effectively, some people are beginning to say this organization and this leadership is actually failing. And um, so those are the concerns. But also, it is a, what some people also saw as a lack of direction. And you've also seen other people outside. This call by Etegwen is not any different. Uh, not so long ago, Dr. Tabani uh, hosted a, a former general, retired, who also almost made the same thing that maybe when the NEC of the ANC fails to take the country forward and also to re address itself to the material challenges that are faced by these people, by their country, then it may be necessary for the NEC to be forced to step down. So in the same way that uh, they are willing to exercise their, their right to govern as uh, elected people, they must also know that uh, they must act on behalf of the people who have actually put, put them there. So these are the concerns. The first thing one will say, there's a concern that uh, there's too much internal strife, Two, there seems to be lack of uh, focus on many other resolutions other than the internal strife that we see in the organization. Dr. Tabani, how heavy a blow is this step aside resolution and the ANC actually acting on it? Because obviously they are looking to win back votes going into the local government elections and branches are still some time away from being able to essentially tinker with the NEC at, at the uh, conference in, uh, of the ANC. So how heavy a blow will this step aside resolution and the governing party acting on it be for them this year? Look, you know, as, as I was saying to you yesterday, you know, the, the, the psyche of ANC uh, branches, leaders, etc., has never been the one that is, in a sense, concerned about what the electorate really will do. I mean, you only have to look at what happened ahead of Polovan. You had what, you know, people described, you know, as, a, you know, a, you know a, 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 div a divisive contest between, at, at that point, President Zuma and President Mbeki. Um, and, and yet still the ANC remained in power. And this is like, what, 14 years ago, yeah. you know. Uh, so, so the, the, the part of why there's this internal strife and internal focus is that it seems like the NC is taking the external focus for granted. It takes the voters for granted. You only have to listen to the NC leaders commenting about the recent uh, by-elections. I mean, how many are those by-elections? But they still provoke the NC leaders to say that that says the people still have confidence in the ANC and so on. And that's why most of the focus then is about 
uh, internal focus. Just to talk about that internal focus, and Professor is right, the General Motau, speaking on my show a couple of weeks ago, talked about this whole notion of the entire NEC stepping aside and not just uh, the individuals identified. This uh, sort of provokes memories of the Morogoro Conference, where the sort of, uh, if, if, if you like, watershed moment for the ANC arrived. And maybe we are, we, are, we are faced with yet another watershed moment like that. And this step aside shows the, the holes within the ANC. And the fact that it's time for the ANC to reflect whether or not it should continue to be in power as business as usual, or it must do something radical uh, uh, to renew itself. And, and I, I quite like what the premier of the, of the Northern Cape is saying, that this may be the chaos that the ANC needs. Uh, in order for it to reflect on itself and, uh, in a sense, cleanse itself. And who knows, maybe to start from scratch, call an agent, uh, you know, conference, uh, to put a new leadership in place that can take it forward may just be what it needs. But we must also not be uh, fooled by the fact that that could be an affectional interest to say, instead of our people accounting, people like Ezma Gashule, Bongo and others, accounting for what they have done in bringing the organization to disrepute mm. would rather have what we call a scotch earth policy that says all of us must go down. And maybe that is not something that uh, history may allow. History doesn't uh, uh, allow vacuums, leadership vacuums of mm. that nature often, uh, Moreno. Dr. Tabani, it could be said that this is all an over-exaggeration. Our analysis of what is happening in the ANC, the step-aside resolution and how, of course, it's being implemented, you know, and, and essentially the comments that are coming from the former ANC president, Thabo Mbeki, as well as Dakota Lajuete, saying that essentially the party is imploding. It could be said that all of this is an over-exaggeration. Over is it an over-exaggeration or is, are they actually imploding? Well, well it, wouldn't be a, it, it, it would be an over-exaggeration if there were no leaks that are clear. I mean, the, uh, fortunately, nobody else is reporting that this is what Mbeki said, this is what Lajuete is saying, this is what the premier of the... The, the Northern Cape says, or the Premier of Limpopo. This, are, this is live, uh, uh, if you like, audio from the meeting, right? So the implosion is a description of what is happening uh, right now. And if somebody as senior as Mbeki, somebody as senior as the Women's League president, themselves feel that the place is on fire, I mean, who are we who are outside to, to argue? They're saying that you must believe it when people show you who they are, you must believe them the first time. So I think we, we cannot make excuses for the fact that the ANC is in trouble. Mm. Uh, but like Professor Zepe said yesterday, it's not about whether they are in trouble or not, because that has happened many times before. I've just told you about what happens what happened ahead of Kulogwan, mm. uh, what happened in Mangau, you know, when uh, Jacob Zuma won for the second time and all of that. If, even at that time, people said this is the, uh, you know, the beginning of the end, mm. and the ANC is still standing. So the issue is, uh, it's not an exaggeration, but it's a reality check. It's yeah. time for the ANC. Anybody who's serious about rebuilding or renewing the ANC has to admit that we are now at the point of a reality check mm. where the ANC has to do something differently, something radical, something new mm. to be taken seriously as wanting to renew itself. Professor, the former president, Jacob Zuma, said the ANC will govern until Jesus comes back. <laughs> well, I, unfortunately, <clears throat> that's a very long time. And uh, I think uh, it was probably an expression of the confidence. But it is that confidence that has led uh, empires to collapse. Uh, remember, empires are not defeated. They collapse in, internally. And uh, once you have that level of com complacency, it, this is what it, it leads to. And uh, what is very important also, uh, which is what um, Dr. Tabani was also raising, is that we are getting eyewitness reports. Mm. And, e and these eyewitness reports are available to all public, the, or the public as, as a whole. And what they are hearing, they're not hearing that uh, the ANC is concerned about us. They don't hear the issues of unemployment, economy. They see the bungling on COVID. So you have a, a, a ruling party that, in its, uh, that is not taking the country forward. So when you have that in an election year, it should be worrying. And uh, 
there are two things that you can read about this. It's simply to say, you guys are destroying yourself, and therefore, maybe uh, Jesus will come sooner. Uh, secondly, it could be, some people could argue that maybe it is good that they're talking about it. Maybe something could, so the fact that they are actually even saying it, that we're imploding, in itself is a, probably a step towards uh, the reinvention of the organization, but they must do it very soon because uh, they've been, give, been given so much leeway. Unfortunately, the, the brand is still strong because uh, some people on the ground says, yeah, um, these guys, the ANC is a good party. It is this individual that we must remove. But at the same time, we must also not shy from the issue that uh, uh, Dr. Taban was raising, that uh, in as much as you talk about the uh, change of leadership, these other issues of corruption will continue because you, we must be able to separate the actions of the state to deal with corruption and the, 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 the challenge of renewal of the organization. The two must be separated. And at the same time, the organization must not use the state institutions to advance this process of renewal. Just very quickly before I let you go, Professor. Can this governing party survive what it's going through right now? Well, I think it, it, it can. I mean, the mere fact that they're talking about it, uh, about the, these issues uh, openly, it's uh, really, for me, a start. But the, the question is how many times should the public give them an opportunity? So that is what the public uh, should actually be raising, that uh, even you listen to the president of the ANC talks about, uh, oh, the problem is factionalism. But you go back to 2007, that Khalima uh, Atlantis report was talking about factionalism, talks about the, the influence of money. You go back, that was still there. I mean, the, the, the splinter groups have occurred precisely because of the rot that was there. So the issue is, are you taking the voters for granted? And it may be that you are so internet focused that you don't take uh, the voters uh, seriously. And if I'm a voter, I'm, I may have to ask myself, why should I vote for this party? For the last four years, they have not even made my life any better. The economy has taken a nosedive. Unemployment has gone up. And so these are the issues that uh, you must give uh, confidence to the people who live in the squatter camps, that uh, when we talk about land, you will not remain landless. Yeah. Th that's, those are the issues that you should be grappling with.